Futures are basically flat, taking Moody's downgrade of France in stride. Greece waits nervously for a vital bailout. Can this constructive action in the market continue? I'm Brittany Umar and the morning call starts right now. Good morning. I'm Scott Redley, Chief Strategic Officer of T3Live.com. And I'm Brittany Umar with The Street, and together we bring you Morning Call. So stocks roared back to life on Monday. Today we have futures that are basically flat, so it seems as though markets are taking the news of Moody's downgrade of France in stride. What are you making of how the market is setting up? I think a digestion day would be perfect. We had Friday's outside reversal, a great time to enter stocks. Yesterday, you had a powerful move showing that the bulls did have some life in them, that stocks could break through some minor resistance points. So today, what I'd like to see is just some sideways digestive action. We might even see that for a few sessions. And then if we could hold higher, I do think we continue. So what are the key levels that we should know in the S&P right now? Well, first things first, we take a look at the chart. You'll see that we broke above the 200-day moving average yesterday. So it would be constructive to see if we could hold above that. So if you go to the chart, you see here's the action in the SPX. All right, this was your outside reversal on Friday, a nice red dog reversal here. I think a lot of people tried to take advantage of that. Yesterday, you pushed away. You had some nice uh, follow through, broke above the 200 days. So I would say if we can go sideways above 1375 to about 1381 for a, a session or so, I think we could set up for another nice trade through yesterday's high of about 1386. And I think ultimately, you know, the bears are going to need to come uh, take a stand here, so to speak, around uh, 1405. So I do think this is the trade. So we need to figure out how it gets there. Now, if we take a more macro look, what can we learn from other outside days we've seen? Well, the, the, some work and some don't. And we had a historic one or a, a really strong one on October 4th in 2011. And then recently, we had one on June 4th, which led to an extended move you know, into the summer top. So if you take a look here at the chart, you will see that, you know, you go back to this, this uh, pattern here. Okay, this was the pattern when we broke down from, you know, the head and shoulders formation, and this was your June 4th low. So you take a close look here, you will see that here is your reversal. Then you didn't really have that much power, but on the third day, you know, you, you saw some strong follow through. You saw some appetite for stock, you know, below this area. And then what happened is we held higher. Holding higher is key. It's showing you that it's real. It's showing you that investors feel like they missed something. So it went sideways, and then we started to trend up into that summer top. So what I'd like to do is see somewhat, you know, a similar situation where, you know, here is your outside reversal. Here is your, your move away, your appetite for stocks at these lower levels. Here is where I think we go sideways. Let's hold above 1375. And then I do think we can continue above this small little downtrend. And then we'll start measuring some of the leaders and see what's going on if we can get to this 1405, which I do think is achievable. Let's take a look at some of the names that acted best in the market yesterday. Namely, let's start with high beta tech, which could be a positive sign for the market how well it acted yesterday. And of course, we have to mention Apple finished up 38 handles. Could it be time to book some profits? Um, it depends on your time frame. You know, we've been trying to try and find that reversal area. And then finally on Friday, it happened. And it was a powerful one on, on a lot of volume. You know, so whenever a stock like this, which is like the heartbeat of tech, which has been giving, you know, investors a, a heart attack, so to speak, whenever you get a reversal like that, it's important. So I was very happy to see it up $38 yesterday, some power, took out some micro resistance, but now it's heading into a, a bigger zone. If you take a look at the chart, you will see overall on a macro level, you know, it came into a key level from a, a ways back. You know, and look at the size of this move from about 700 and change all the way down to about 505. Here was that little head and shoulders top. Here was that trend that we drew that we broke. You know, so coming down here, if you sold it correctly right around here, or right around there, this was a great opportunity. So, you know, macro investors, if you're still sitting there, you know, I, I think you're probably a, a little worried, you know, as far as the trader who entered on this reversal day, you know, like I did, I sold a little bit yesterday. I'm still long some. I think that this active trading move could come in and fill this gap around 573 to 578. And then what you want to do is you want to see it go sideways. You want to see the same thing with the market, show some commitment to another, you know, an upper level. And then at some point, I do think through the Christmas and whatnot, you know, it could get back up to this 605 level. And and that's when it's really going to have some serious resistance. And after a long losing streak, Google came back to life yesterday. 21 point gain, reclaimed its eight day. So could it possibly see some selling pressure now? 
I think there's some more room before selling pressure. I, I think that it was a nice tactical trade, just like Apple from Friday. And now people want to figure out, does it have legs? Can it be sustained? You know, ever since it got halted and had those earnings, you know, you had a quick decision to make to get out, and that was a lot higher. So now if you're trying to figure out if you can get back in, because entries and exits matter, you, know, you had your nice active trade, now it needs to prove itself. You go to the chart of Google and you will see, you know, this was earnings day. This is when it got halted midday. You guys all remember that. That was also a great day to leave the market. You know, on this day, S&P was still around 14, you know, 40-ish. You know, and then you had your lower move, and then you had a somewhat of a bear flag right here. And then it continued to the downside. You know, this actually held the 200 day where Apple got really pushed below it. So it acted a bit better relative strength wise. So yesterday, nice trade for those who entered here or, you know, or entered when it broke this minor descending channel. I do think it's going to have some resistance around 675 to 680. So if you're playing it for a short term move, that's probably where you could sell some and then figure out if it goes sideways and then starts to take back some of this harsh potent down move that's been in the direction of this stock for the past few weeks. Bank of America also impressed yesterday, closing the day up 4%. It's now back above all of its moving averages. So where is next resistance? Okay, I want to show you uh, how to figure out relative strength a bit. Because the XLF, which we talked about having a high level stop, you know, broke its 50 day, went all the way down to the 200 day. So if we take a quick look at the XLF, you will see that, you know, the, the, the proxy for some of the banks, this was that trend that we talked about. This is when it broke the 50 day. So what did it do? It came all the way through the 100 day, almost to the 200 day. And now it's bouncing just back up to this broken area. So you look at to find relative strength in the banks. Look at Bank of America. Bank of America right now did not get to the 100 day, did not get to the 200 day, already reclaimed its moving averages. So it's showing some commitment, showing that institutions are buying it as the market's coming down. So to me, I think Bank of America is a, a stock you put in the drawer. And I do think at some point, especially if the, if the market gets a little sustained movement, it should take out this $10 area. Then you go to your weekly chart on Bank of America. And I think there's you know, a, a good or a high probability that it does see $12 at some point. Could be actually if it gets moving in the first quarter of 2013 or at some point in 2013. Monsanto finishing the day up almost 4% yesterday. It's on its way to reclaiming its 50 day, but this stock has had three up days. So should we expect some digestion? Yes, just like the market, it'd be nice to see it digest, but you want to see it digest higher. So this is a leader. This is a stock showing relative strength, you know, within its peer group uh, with the AGs because the AGs pulled back with the market, didn't show much relative strength. You know, so what you want to do is you want to see, you know, where the alpha is. And if you go to Monsanto, you will see, you know, it, it did come to the 200 day. OK, but it had a nice red dog reversal well before Friday. Look what happened. This was Thursday. OK, so I showed you it, it bottomed a day before the market, putting it or, or should have put it on your radar. I, it didn't go on mine because I was in at the trade show. But anyway, you know, here's your, your third day. It's above the moving averages. It's, it's very close to the prior highs. So to me, this is saying that this is a candidate to make new highs first. So let's see if stocks can make new highs. This would show us that the market has some power if they let it do so. Qualcomm is still above all of its key moving averages. It's at the top of its short term digestion area. So because it is Thanksgiving week, do you think we might not see it break through that level? Or because it is Thanksgiving week, we might see it because, you know, when everyone's away, you know, the institutions might play. So with that being said, you know, during the pullback, it really didn't correct that much. It had earnings less, you know, during that whole process. It tried to be strong, but just like any situation, it's hard to go against the tide when the tide's moving against you. But right now I see a nice uh, flag type pattern. So for macro holders of Qualcomm, this is in the, in the cards for a move higher into year end. If you take a look here, you will see that you know, it is above the 200 day, it's above all the moving averages, and it's flagging really nicely. So right now, you know, if you're in just say a tier one, I, I think you can get into a tier two if it gets above and stays above 62.75. If you're looking for a trade, you know, that's the area that shorts could get squeezed and you could see it go in motion. So this is something that I think should be on your radar over the next few sessions. All right, coming up, we're going to dive into some retail names right ahead of Thanksgiving and Black Friday. But first, a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Sean Hendelman of T3 Live, where we train, coach, and mentor traders in order to help you put your money to work with confidence. The T3 Live approach is a blueprint for you to recognize, adapt, and ultimately take advantage of different market conditions. To begin your training with T3 Live, we would like to offer you the opportunity to enroll in our free 30-day online home study course. Fill in your name and email address, and I'll see you on the other side. Retail names could be in focus now ahead of the Thanksgiving holiday. Let's start with Family Dollar, which saw a big gain yesterday. 
Yeah, this one was the first out of the gates, above moving averages, showing relative strength, all the criteria. You look at the, the power in this chart yesterday or in this move. Maybe a lot of people are very cost conscious, and why not? We're not in a great uh, economy right now, but this was a nice tight pattern. Triggered above 68, coming into some resistance. I think it's in the cards as it's above all these moving averages. You know, pretty close to uh, the old highs here. So at this particular point, you know, it either could go real quickly right through uh, this 69, 61, 70, or I'd like to see it maybe digest a little bit, go sideways, and then we could probably get a meteor trade through 70 going into that holiday or into the, you know, the Christmas season even. Now, Target has reclaimed most of its key moving averages except the 50 day. So could we see that happen soon? Yeah, this one also hovering higher, showing relative strength in the retail space, cost conscious, fits the mold of people who are trying to save. But, you know, you can go to Target and get almost anything, right? You could go shopping for groceries, you can go shopping for clothes, you could do anything at Target. And I actually love that store. <laughs> but anyway, with that being said, you look at the pattern here and, you know, it's showing a nice setup. Okay, after peaking, it's consolidated, it's, it had a nice methodical move to the downside. It did not hit the 200 day the way a lot of other strong stocks did. You know, it put a double bottom in right into this area, this area area, which was about 61-ish, and it's coming right into this downtrend. I think it's also healthy to look at the market that if a stock like Target with a big market cap the way it does could get through just a 63 half and, and close strong or get a nice wide range bar, that'll be good for retail, good for the market. So I think macro investors are sitting this one. I think it's good. Guys looking for a trade or looking to get into tier two if you're a macro investor, you know, 63 half is probably the level that could be that pivot to get in motion. Now, what about Lulu? It's at the top of its weekly range right now now had a nice gain yesterday could it have enough fuel to break through that level um, I, at this time period, if the market's going to go, this is in the cards also. Um, you had a nice earnings uh, move. Uh, it was a while ago. It feels like it was a year ago, but it wasn't that far. You know, hasn't had much traction since. It just slowly just creeped in, but we also weren't in a great market environment. So if you look at Lulu, which has awesome accessories, women love that store, and so do guys actually. I have a pair of those shorts. Look at that wide range bar, slowly coming in, nicely controlled. It almost uh, coincided with where it broke out last time, went a little bit below. Oh, sorry. It also hit the 200 day moving average and bounced off it with some power. So you see these two days right here, nice and strong. So if Lulu can go a, a little sideways, okay, digested, I think we're going to get a nice trade coming in right through this resistance. So here's your resistance pivot. You have yesterday's high to look at, 71 and a quarter. You know, it just had a nice move, so I wouldn't chase it here if you're very short term and active. But if it goes sideways, I think that's when you, know, you, you get a, a meteor move above it. And then look how close we are to the prior resistance. So I think this as a macro investment is, is, is on the radar. And as far as a trade, you know, I think you can get one right through this level. Hopefully you got a little bit of it yesterday. Yeah, and some other of the little bit of higher end names are doing well as well. Nordstrom had a nice rally, 3% yesterday. Now the retailer has reclaimed all of its key moving averages. So where might next resistance be? Almost at the highs. So at this point, you know, can stocks make new highs? That's what people want to see, because if you see a new rally come underway, you need some stocks to break out, to join, to show some enthusiasm, not just bounces back into resistance. And this one actually has been holding up higher and confusing some people because people think the economy is so bad. But who knows? Sometimes it's just the institutions and they go with what they like. So if you look here, you'll see the chart and you'll see, you know, above the 200 day, it reclaimed all the moving averages, has a really big resistance coming in right here. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if it could take out these highs. You have big resistance of 58. It tried it right here, couldn't do it. Tried it again, tried it again. So at this point, next time through the holiday season, maybe it'll have a little bit more success. But overall, stocks you know, come a, a long way, holding higher, and they're really not giving investors too much of a headache here. So at this point, it's also in the game. It's a stronger stock. And another discount retailer, TJ Maxx, has been on the run, rallying since November 9th. Could it reclaim that last elusive moving average, the 100 day? This one, you know, it broke a, a long time trend line and just rallying back. So I'd be a little bit careful, but it's also, you know, bounced back with, with some energy. So if you take a look here at this chart, look at the, look at the size of this move. <laughs> it, it's, it's been on the go all the way from, you know, look, go all the way back here. And, and, you know, it broke its trend line right there, came back, retested it. You had another smooth little trend line that it broke right around here. So it's coming up right into key resistance. So at this point, is it going to power through it or is it going to be rejected by it? So, again, another 
proxy for retail in the market. So far, a nice cash flow move if you got involved already. You take a closer look here. You know, it, in this two-day move, um, it, it, it rallied really well. Look at this. This already took out a resistance point that the market has. And so it's showing relative strength. I think this is something also put on your radar, maybe put on your shopping list. Okay, time for some quick hits here. Baidu has been lagging big time. Where is the real support level here? At this point, quick hit, I think people are, are just leaning on this short, trying to find the bottom, stay away from it. It looks like there's problems here I would just avoid. All right, what about Toll Brothers? Opened up yesterday, could have acted better. The stock closed at lows. What do you make of the action? I didn't like that the home builders, which have been really strong, had good data yesterday, opened up, and it did, they didn't continue. So if you look here at the chart of Toll Brothers, look, you know, here's that uh, reversal. You had a decent, strong day. It went into resistance, and this is actually a clue to look at because if you look here, you know, a lot of stocks are being rejected by bigger resistance areas and here was support so when you come lower and you bounce back to it it turns into resistance so I would say you know for this stock to be any good it should hold above this 31 area for then maybe it'll, it'll have a little bit more power if the market wants to let things break through bigger levels of resistance so here's your resistance I would say hold 31 and, and keep it on the radar and what about Facebook lost 3% showing relative weakness I think Facebook is showing some really nice volume spikes. Um, on Wednesday, I talked about potentially the shorts being in for it because if you remember, last quarter's earnings, Facebook um, went pre-market to almost 24 and a half, 25, and then within a week or two, it was all the way down to 20 because everyone was scared of the 800 million shares. Look at Facebook now. You know, it, it's hovering, it has a nice little channel here. I'm um, keeping it on my radar. I was hoping for a little bit of a down open because I might nibble a little bit. What I think would be constructive is let it stay above 2250. If it could hover above 2250 and stay in the top third of this recent move and you know, keep some shorts trapped, keep some pent up momentum, it's above the moving averages. I think at some point we're gonna get a move through 24 and a quarter you know, to fill this gap. So I think this is a juicy trade that should be on everyone's radar. Now, the OIH had a gain of 3% and broke above its recent downtrend. So how bullish does that look to you? I think just with what's going on in, in Israel and the Mideast and, and oil be a focus, I think that there was a lot of shorts in, in the refiners. So yes, it was just a bigger move. It's still not showing much relative strength. It's still not a leading group. But if you look here at the chart, you will see um, you know, there was cash flow there. And that seems like what it's been all year. It's been a laggard group, but at times can give you a trade. So it broke above this little descending channel. You know, if you want to trade it versus gap, I think it's okay. But it's going to have a wall of resistance coming into this 39 and change. So this is the area that, you know, it could maybe rally and continue if you're trading it. And this is where it's going to see significant resistance right around 39. And the GLD held higher as well. Where could we see it pick up some momentum? Um, GLD held in pretty well during the whole down move. And um, it's in like a mid-level box type pattern. So if you look here at the, at the chart, you will see a lot of guys are waiting for it to get above 13, I mean, I think 17.35, which is a spot price. As far as the GLD, which also a lot of people trade, it's got to get above, I would say, 168.54, reclaim the 50-day, hold that, and then maybe it can make an attempt to take out this bigger resistance, the 1800 an ounce, which has been a problem, which it hasn't been able to get over in, 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 a, in a significant amount of time. So if you look at this macro pattern, it actually looks pretty good. Okay, you had a, an, an enormous move, right, all the way, you know, the course of the past few years, consolidating pretty higher, you know, in a higher area. And now if you look at this channel, it's in the top half of the channel versus the bottom half. And then right here, closer up in the mid area, you know, it could get above again, 1735. You know, I, I showed you the price in the GLD. I think keep this on the radar. And then at some point, you know, if all of a sudden the debt talks start to fail or whatnot, or, you know, something happens crazy in the, in the Mideast, which is already happening, you know, and people turn to this for the fear trade, you know, it, it could get moving pretty well. All right. Well, after today, only one more trading day this week until the holiday. Where's your focus heading into trading today? Uh, I'm going to try and stick with some of my longs and see if I see relative strength, see if I see some of those trades develop. I do think that, you know, for cash flow purposes, we had a really nice move from Friday into yesterday. So I don't think you could expect too much today. But I do think if we do hold higher, you know, through the, the actual holiday, I think we get a follow through day over the next two to five sessions. That would mean, according to IBD, rally back on and that could give us higher prices. And I'm not saying we're going to make new highs on the year. But no reason why we can't, you know, at least get to that 1405 or maybe even back to 1425 at some point towards year end. So we need to measure this rally to see if it's much more than just a trade, which it wound up being a, a nice day and a half move. And that's it for us today. So a happy trading, everyone, and have a great day.